How awesome is this that we're in Grid House? Come on, you guys. Let's say, you know, it's a house in Austin, Texas. If you're not happy, the bar is to your right. The bathroom, uh, yeah, the bathroom is to your left. And right here on stage, we have a panel of fabulous folks. Um, and I think it, we should start it by just announcing who we are, what we do, and then uh, just take the conversation from there. I, I like that. My name is Julie Lamb. I'm executive producer of Miami NFT Week. I am a storyteller connector. I am a hodl gal and I am a reluctant flipper. I did not get into the crypto game because I have a um, faint heart. I got into it because I love the idea of possibility. I love the idea of belief. And the most important thing to me is right here, right now, with all of us making an in real life connection and telling each other that we believe. Here are my esteemed colleagues on the panel, Tao. I'm Tao. Uh, I'm VP of Lending at Celsius. Um, and I've been with Celsius for three years. This is actually my first adventure in crypto after a long time in the military and defense industry. So very different. Uh, and I also joined because of the mission and what crypto can do, the social impact of crypto. I think it's, uh, it's one of the best jobs. I can't believe I call it a job. It's the best thing you can do, really. Mm, Amber. Um, I'm Amber Allen, and I'm the CEO of AA Labs. Uh, AA Labs creates digital worlds, what we now call metaverse space, Web3, and um, we truly believe in the human connection. And so I think right now that's very much missing in the digital space is how we're actually having fun and still having that human connection. That's what I focus on. I like that. Cynthia. Hi, guys. My name is Cynthia Sin on Twitter. Um, but my mom likes Cynthia, so yeah, Cynthia. Um, I'm the co-founder of Moongate Guild, which is a Web3 gaming guild. And we are different in that we're not doing the renter scholar model. We want to empower everyone to be a scholar. So uh, that means creating an artisan marketplace of all the best in-game assets and just creating ways for players to become owners versus renters. And um, we also have a high, uh, we prioritize research. Can you guys hear me? Oh, sorry. We, we prioritize research. You can switch it out. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Good um, so we're going to do uh, like an NFT project. You can come in and, you know, uh, join the Decentralized Research Hub and get access to the Moongate library as well. So we're really focused on pushing the Web3 gaming space in terms of like core primitives and uh, game design research. So. I think we were just having a mic, uh, you know, mic speaker issue. I see some familiar faces out there, you guys. If you don't see a familiar face, I invite you to say hello to your neighbor, give them a virtual high five, Check in with them on socials, follow them. Find us, follow us. Because it's about community, right? And it's about community. I wanna uh, talk to my friend Tal about crypto because in 2017, I bought a little known cryptocurrency called Ethereum at the time when it was between 76 and about 200 and some odd dollars. I put it on a ledger and then I forgot about it. Now we're here in 2022. That's very interesting. So what is your crypto journey like, especially with Celsius and how you feel crypto and what you see happening in the future? I need the mic there you go. Sorry for taking it. Um, well, when I joined Celsius, I don't think I realized how big the impact that I will have you know, on people. So our, the product I'm responsible for is the lending, the borrow feature, where everyone can just put their crypto in their app and borrow against it. You know, some people don't want to liquidate their Bitcoin. They believe, Bitcoin or any other coin, right? They believe that in the future, this will worth a lot more. They don't want the tax event, but they need money. Like you need to pay for your day-to-day -day life, right? And when you go to a bank, I w actually before I joined Celsius, I went to a bank to get a loan to go to school. I got into an MBA program in a nice, very nice school here in the United States. And I was like, okay, how am I funding this? And I went to the bank and they, it was hell. <laughs> like, I, I don't like stepping into the bank. I don't like, it's it, it just looking at the bank, I was like, oh, damn, I can't believe I need to do this now. I walked in, I had no options. I'm using this bank for what? I don't know, 15 years of my life? And they give me nothing. All they told me is like, I think your parents have money, so you can take from them, you know, 
<laughs> just go to school. Um, and then a week later, I met Alex, our CEO, and I heard about the mission, and I was, wow, that's amazing. Like, the option of, you know, I don't need to go to a bank who tells me your credit score is like this, you owe money for something else. Just if you have crypto, you can use it as collateral for anything you need in life. If it's buying a house, it's paying for the vet, it's for school, is um, you know fixing a house that was broken in a storm. You hear you hear all these stories and you understand how big is your impact on people, how you can change life. You don't need to take fees from them. You know you don't need to take high rates. You just do. The Bluetooth is disconnected. Oh no! Oh, thank you, Siri. Yeah, thank you. So polite of you, isn't it? Thank you. Your Bluetooth is now disconnected. That sucks. Thank you. Um, that means nobody yeah. can be hacked today <laughs> here at Grit. Great security here, guys. So yeah, it just uh, you feel you're changing people's life with what you do, and it's very easy to do it. I mean, it's not easy in the matter of regulations and everything going on, but the basics of business, it's very easy. You don't need to be greedy, you know? You know, speaking about, oh, let's see if this is. We'll try this one. We might have to just do the musical chairs of microphones, which is OK. You know, you were talking about making sure that um, we are a collective. You know, Cynthia, with your guild, you were talking to me earlier about how a collective consciousness can actually make a change. Can you share a little more about yes, that? Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. So, I mean, I think the Web3 ethos is more moving from one creator to like the creator e economy and empowering people, like I was saying, to be owners. And that is, for me, it feels the most true in games because games are like a form of an art, they're an interactive media, and it goes beyond just the intellectual property of the games. In, in game economies, uh, everyone can be a creator. Like, if you're a Twitch streamer, you are a content creator within the game economy. And I think that uh, Web3 grit gaming is primed to touch millions, billions of people, and that means that we can enable people that weren't um, at a higher hierarchy in the traditional gaming space to then, you know, uh, kind of take the helm and, and, and shape Web3 gaming to, to be one that's far more inclusive and diverse. So I think there's a, a great potential to do that. You know what I find interesting about that is, I mean, I, I love being a gamer. I don't know if yeah. we have video gamers in the room, but um, what I love is kind of that crowdfunding of it as well, right? I've been in esports a long time. I used to, um, I got to work for Riot Games and help create uh, season two for League of Legends uh, for esports. Wow. And what I found was fascinating was um, they wouldn't take us serious. Like we wanted to take over Staples Arena and uh, Staples wouldn't give it to us for long enough. They said the audience wouldn't be there. So that's why season two for League of Legends mm -hmm. was actually at Galen. But what was fascinating is my favorite thing was one of my VC friends said, he goes, I don't understand it and I don't understand why there's such a cult following of fanatics for gaming. He said, but what I do understand is money and crowdfunding. And he goes, and the fact that Dota raised $25 million just for the prize pool of their game, just so you, and they crowdfunded, like you're talking about, a group of gamers, and they raised $25 million for the prize pool to just watch their pro win. Mm. That's awesome, that's what you're talking about. It's open for everybody to collaborate for what they love. Yeah, do you f I feel like, you know, when it gets back down, this is I go back down to all the basics. We go back to kindergarten rules. Your word is your bond. And your social currency is worth more than any amount of money. So the fact that all of us are up here on stage and we can actually have a conversation about what we're passionate about in the space and know that we're talking about gaming, gamifying, making a, actually a possibility of a living in gaming. Do you find, what's the future of gaming that you see going forward in being able to like get away from maybe that desk job? They, or maybe you're going back into the workforce. Maybe you've decided to raise your family and they're now old enough for you to be able to step into this idea of what your children are doing and gaming. Yeah, I mean, here at, at AA Labs, we actually own a digital, I call it kind of a no tool, code toolkit. Mm -hmm. And so the, it's a metaverse platform that people can, using the rules of gaming, but they're learning and play. Look, anything that we interact with and we touch, we remember better. And so if we're having fun and we're having enjoying as we learn, so it's a lot of the gaming rules. So instead of just doing gaming for a Grand Theft Auto or something, why not do gaming where you're also learning self-love and empathy? And that's one of the ones we're doing right now. Um, the kindness campaign is built on our platform. 
And I love that. And then you got on the other side, we have Trish for NASA building it for scientists and their papers. So I think it's interesting because it's, it's a no age thing, wow. right? Is that uh, what you just described? Is that like a no code game engine? Yeah, so we built a native, it's a native game engine made wow. for mobile and it's WebGL. So it's as simple as a simple website that you go to. Um, and so it's frictionless. You can do it on your phone or computer, no headset needed. That's another important part, the mobile part. You know, in the gaming world, like, you know, like a lot of development is around PC gaming and that, you know, is not accessible for most people in the world, yeah, like in, in Africa and Philippines. That's why Axie was big because you could like, there are a lot of the crypto games you can play on your phone. So it's accessible to people all over the world. So I love that you could do this on your phone. I always laugh because um, I'll, I'll talk to you, you were talking about like the women that are playing with their kids and stuff. And I, I'll have so many women say, oh, I'm not a gamer as they're playing words with friends or they're doing, you know, their cr candy crush. I'm like, or what wordle. do you think that is? Or wordle? wordle. Yeah. Wordle. And it's, so it's so interesting because we think a gamer is, to your point, a PC thing where you're sitting and, but a gamer is actually anything that gets to do a fun interaction with other people. And that's mm -hmm. what we love as gamers. It's the fact that I can live and grow up in East Texas, but actually get to meet people in Germany and Italy and play Halo with them, which mm -hmm. is what I, you know, that camaraderie and human connection. Do you feel like, Tal, women, and I know this is part of the topic, so I did want to at least touch on this, that as a woman, I just have to be very clear, I will always speak up for those that can't speak for themselves or don't get enough of a platform. Women in marginalized communities, this is my passion. I will be a vessel for that conversation. I would like eventually to be a point where we are all just digital code, where I don't have to talk about being a woman, a certain age, how I look, where I live, but in the crypto world, how do you see the future of pushing forward through those boundaries? We were talking about those barriers that at times you know, women might face because they might not feel like there's a family. By the way, we're all family. So if you're interested in crypto, Tal's here to talk to you about it. Yes. Well, when I just started in Celsius three years ago, we went to the blockchain week in Paris, right? Uh, my fr actually, my second week in Celsius. So my second week in crypto world. And I walked to the bathroom. And I was the only person going, like only woman, the, the only woman in the bathroom. And usually, you know, the line is really <laughs> long. <laughs> and I was, I was like, whoa, <laughs> what's going on? I don't need to wait in line. What's going on? And then I realized there's barely women here in this conference. Now, three years later, when you're going into a crypto convention, there is a line in the women bathroom right now. So it, do, it, it does show how this is changing. It's still very hard. And it's very techy, and I can tell you, my friends always telling me, "Yeah, my boyfriend just bought this. My, I don't know, my my brother-in-law just got this." I'm like, "Okay, stop. I don't like this language. Let's teach you." So it's a lot about education and teaching. At the end, women are half of the world, right? I think even more. I think we're more. I think we're more, <laughs> right? <laughs> and there's no reason why we won't be at least 50% of the user or the users or the employees in a company is just a lot of education that needs to be in and a lot I think a, a lot of women are scared about it and it's time to educate more and teach them this is not it doesn't it's not that hard it's just you need to learn a little bit and there I definitely see more women coming into this space and you see the change Amber I know that with the Ready Player One and also Westworld that you guys did here at South by Southwest the activation you really made sure to bring people into the space that were knowledgeable had fire in the belly, and just so happened that it was across a couple of different genders. Do you find that when you're making a decision about bringing in a teammate or onboarding somebody new, do you allow a definition to help you make a decision? Meaning, do you say, oh, well, because that person's older or younger or female or male, or do you say to yourself, they have fire in the belly, and they have experience. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the biggest things is the experience is important. But I also think what's so great about when you create these live experiences in like a Ready Player One, you have so many different types of vendors as well, right? I mean, we were, we were building things for a VR uh, headsets, and we were able to bring our partners Wave 
and Adam Arigo owns that. And then we were able to bring in like um, the groups that uh, get to actually make avatars. So there were so many, there was all these artists that were locally got to come in and create inside of the space. And so what I love is when you're creating experiences and also what we're seeing on the digital space is it gives back to what you were talking about, the creative side to actually come out more. And what I do love right now is I believe that there's a lot more of um, an appreciation and going to be need for Web3 in the artist world and in that creative storytelling, right? And so I think it's interesting because really what you look at is the storytelling behind what you're building and the people that are also building it, can they see that vision? And that's really where you know, the pulse lies. Yeah. Let's reset the room for a second. Can you share the difference between Web 2 and Web 3 for someone who might be watching this the first time? Yeah, I know, definitely. So Web 2 in these days consists of, uh, you know, obviously before it was just like the closed internet and uh, basically the, the difference was Web 3 was the open internet. But now Web 3 means it also includes the metaverse and all these virtual spaces that we get to create together. So the Web 3 is the, you know, the com compilation of all these new technologies coalescing and powered by the blockchain versus Web 2 was everything before. That's how You I know, say. and I also like to think Web 2 is kind of the reading and writing and the chat messages, the reading, the writing, the websites that are one dimensional. And now with Web3, it's more of the video, the visuals, the artistic way of um, going dimensional, right? So like right now, metaverses, everybody's talking about the VR headsets, but the adaption rate is not there. Where I say the metaverse and Web3 are, are the starts of it, we have to build the bridge products. And that's like 3D websites, right? Yeah. And like I would say the difference too with Web2 and Web3, now it's like, uh, it's kind of like s a joke in the space, like the way that you think, if you're like uh, backwards in thinking, people will be like, oh, that's so Web 2 of you to do, you know? It, it's become like a slang now that to be Web 3 is to be forward thinking and to build with those things in mind. All right, let's even reset the room even further. Let's go fun. What was your favorite video game ever? Well, when I was a kid, it's, I don't know if you can call it a video game. When I was a kid, I was a big fan of Heroes of Might and Magic 3. Uh, I was the only girl in the class, and then my best friend came along, and we became a bunch of girls playing with each other, Heroes of Might and Magic, like conquer, you know, just win, basically, right? Uh, I loved this. I, I loved it so much. I wish, you know, as a kid, I had a lot more options, and people would tell me, you know, go and play, but I think now it's something that, you know, it's more like, Everyone are playing, everyone gaming, this is the thing, right? When, when I was a kid, it was, you have one hour on the computer and you're done. <laughs> That's like, it's expensive, it's like, it's time consuming. Um, I wish I could have more time to play Heroes of Might and Magic right now. This is my favorite. Well, and now gaming is so entertainment as well, right? Like mm -hmm. I'll jump on, my little nephews live in Longview, East Texas, and I'll jump on with them and um, whenever the Ariana concert was going on in Fortnite. Mm, that was, and then being yes, able to jump yes, on a unicorn yes, and collect yes, coins yes. and we're racing each other to collect coins while watching a live concert. It was just so cool. That was awesome. What's your favorite old school game? Well, I'm gonna age myself really badly right now, but my favorite game growing up was Club Penguin. So that's probably... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, Disney, Disney era. So, um, no, I liked Club Penguin. It was, it had no objective. It was just an open world. You could meet, you know, kids from all over the world. And I think that, you know, speaks to like the crypto space. A lot of Gen Z and crypto are here now because we played Club Penguin and we understand, like, we understand the the metaverse because of that experience. So, I have to say, for me, uh, you know, it'd be very easy for me to say. Pac-Man or Tetris, right? Because I'm probably some level of OCD making that happen. But I think my favorite game for me was Frogger. And you know why? Because it was like OCD and strategy. You know, you knew you were going to either get in the water, you had to figure it out, you had to get a friend and get the other move, and you had to be friends with the alligator, but move on to the log, but it was too short and not timing. And at the end of the game, you get rewarded by points, and you knew that you could come back again and again. And it was in my favorite pizza place, where I met up with my friends, and we had pizza and Coca-Cola, and back in the day, you put peanuts in your Coca-Cola. If you're old enough to know what that means, just know that's my dad teaching me that. And I will always love Frogger and pizza and Coca-Cola with peanuts in it. So 
That's my old school game. I want to go game now. <laughs> I, like, I don't want to go to work now. <laughs> but, but you think about it, like even like Mario Brothers, right? Like one of the first ones. Remember whenever, like I don't know if you remember, you'd like go to like school and it would be like, um, wait, did you find the one in level three where you can jump up above the elevators and then you can like sneak into the other worlds? And someone the other day goes, I just don't understand why my kids are watching esports and they're watching other people. Mm. And I go, do you not remember that feeling when you learned something that lets you get better in a game? Yeah. And that's what I love about like the esports side as well is it's like you actually get to watch a sport and you get to learn how to be better at it. And that's cool. Like it goes back to that collaboration with your friends. So, this is a good question. You bring up collaboration with your friends. If I were to tell you in real life, watch out for the pothole, go talk to the troll and get the little sparkly widget, would you do it? You need to explain it to me better. As an Israeli, I don't understand this language so bad. That if, was so good. If I <laughs> give you some potential forward-thinking gaming advice, I always, I maybe I already made it to level two or three, and I knew to get there faster, you had to do a few things to get there faster. Would you listen to my advice? I would not listen to you. I'm too competitive. I need to learn. Well, there's I different types of myself. players, right? Oh. Yeah. It's like I, I like learning things alone. I might break the computer in the meanwhile. <laughs> Probably will scream a lot, but I like, at the end, uh, understanding things, right? Uh, you know, there was cheats everywhere when you played in games in the yeah. past, and the cheats can help you get more money, buy more soldiers, get more horses. And I'm, nope, nope, I, I'll lose until I get it. You know, it's interesting. I, um, it's curiosity is what you're talking about, right? It's, um, you, there's different ways to be curious. I like to say um, curios true curiosity is looking underneath the rock just to see what's under the rock. It's not curiosity to look under the rock only for gold because then you'll be disappointed, right? And so I find it fascinating because curiosity can come in different ways. Like what you're talking about of, oh, no, 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 I don't want to, don't give me the cheats. I want to figure this out myself. Where I'm on the other side, I'm going, okay, give me the cheats so I can get even better to get the next <laughs> level. <laughs> well, it's also, if you're really enjoying something, you don't want it to end. And you know, if you have like something helping you, you, you don't want to get to the end of it, right, that fast. So I'll prefer to get stuck a little bit. It gives me more time on this game. Yeah, it's and funny. I have an arcade room at my house and on the wall, really big, it says your princess is in another castle in neon lights. And everybody's like, what? Because you, you, you're not a princess? And I'm like, no, no, no. It just means just like we were raised. You always had another castle to conquer mm -hmm. when you play games. <laughs> Do you like to have help or would you prefer to discover it? Do your own research. D-Y-O-R. <laughs> I mean, I am stuck, like stuck, stuck on a level in Legend of Zelda right now. So I actually might look at a cheat code because I like to <laughs> play smarter, not harder. And I, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's what I was saying. There's different like personas in, in game, just like in life. Like if someone were to give you advice, like some people would take it and some people want to learn on their own. Like I, I think games are so similar to life. It's, it's really, really kind of crazy to think about. Yeah. If there was the future of crypto, Tal, what do you think that might be? Adoption. I mean, I think crypto needs to be a little easier to understand for a lot of people. It's very techy today and very scary because of it. People use this uh, as excuse also to make it like crypto is a bad thing for the world. Um, I think the future is adoption make it easier to understand. And I think a lot of platforms, including Celsius, that's what we are here for. We are for adoption and to use crypto for a good social impact. That's the, the beginning of crypto, right? I think this is, the future is what it was built for. The mm -hmm. basics is the future of it. Just give people the freedom with their money. Give them more options with their money. You know, you don't have to be rich to get something from your bank. You can, can do it on your own. You know, all you need is a little bit to start and you build yourself. And crypto give, gives you the option to do so. Mm, Cynthia. We're definitely headed in the same direction about the adoption and the accessibility. If you guys know DeFi Kingdom, it's like a, it's a DEX, but it's on top of it, it looks like a game. So they've made crypto look fun and it's actually really popular on Harmony. And I think more and more things are gonna start becoming gamified so that they can be approachable. Like, Celsius, you know, I'd like to work. Just putting that out there. Welcome. <laughs> we love to have Hello, you make friend. it gamified. Um, but yeah, I think it's all about, uh, like she's saying, building a bridge from Web3 to the rest of the world. And I, I'm here because I think the bridge will be built through fun and through play. So that's mm. how I see it. Amber, what do you think the future is of gaming? 
Well, I mean, I, I, we're already seeing it uh, where our entertainment is, the entertainment, the shopping, and all of that is all in one space, right? I mean, you're watching it right now, even with Fortnite and Roblox. So um, I, that's where I believe right now the bridge products are needed because we have such a generational gap between uh, the Oregon's Trail and the Fortnite worlds. And so I think uh, the future is really, truly going to, it's kind of like um, Machikaku always says, it's like, it's going to be what the human adoption will allow for. And so, um, but I definitely believe that more and more of the space will be in the entertainment, will be in like uh, the 3D-ish style worlds. But real life is pretty amazing. So <laughs> I don't think we should be replaced. I think the yeah. products and stuff should be for the in-between times. Like, when is that time that you have, you meet your community in a real life event, and then you use these wonderful platforms to be that bridge until the next time that we are together. Mm -hmm. And then you build the technology, like gaming style for businesses, that is more of the things that real life doesn't give you. I can't remember everybody that I see their face. But if I have a way to actually be able to tag them or like LinkedIn does and be able to connect and stay, and social media does, right? So I think there's ways like that that will just keep openly growing. I, uh, to, to everyone's point, what I've been seeing the future is getting back to the family unit. You know, this holiday season was the first time as a holiday that we laughed about NFTs, crypto, the future, we weren't talking about religion, we weren't talking about politics, we weren't talking about all the things that have happened in the past two years to all of our families. We were talking about Deadheads or Celsius or Ready Player One or the movie that we saw that we were able to play on our computers and or our um, TVs with grandma for the first time. I had my mom ask me about deadheads because she got into their little episodes because I showed her what we were doing in NFTs. My mom is now addicted to NFTs. <laughs> so I think, I think being able to, for me, the future is us again, ba bringing it back down to the basics, meeting again here in real life, connecting with each other. You guys make sure you follow each other. Um, say hello to your neighbor, follow each other in social media. This is how we build community. And then we step outside this community and we bring it to the greater consciousness of people wanting to know, like, we're pretty deep in this, you guys. We're pretty granular. But there are people out there that are still asking in the grocery store line, mm -hmm. what's an NFT? I see my son spending all this time or daughter spending all this time in games and I'm afraid they're not going to go off to college. Maybe they're not meant to go off to college. Preach, I dropped out at UT, Austin. Oh. <laughs> 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 My mom's shaking her head like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, there's always, t I have to say this. You know what? Um, I think there's, that school comes in lots of different forms. You know, there is always a time to step back in if you choose that you'd like to get a traditional degree. There's um, certainly time to do that. Um, I've been saying a lot lately that, you know, you grab the bull by the horns, mm -hmm. a.k.a. hook em horns, because <laughs> I know, <laughs> Bevo. <laughs> Uh, so I, I, I'm all for, you know, a traditional education as well as, uh, you know, crypto uh, education. a crypto education, if you would say. You can also do a lot more today. I mean, in the past, education was, you know, you had to go to school to learn. You don't have to do this these days. Mm -hmm. You can go online and learn. You can go and game and talk to people around the world and learn about cultures and learn about other people. So... It, it's changing, right? Yeah. I went to school because I had to kind of thing. My mom is uh, Jewish and, uh, <laughs> and hardcore and that, and I went to school, and I can tell you I learned a lot more in my three years in Celsius than in my three years degree, right? It's nice to have. It was good. Some things were very helpful, but the world is changing to a point you don't really have to go to school, right? Yeah. You can learn a lot online wi from other people around the world and their experience. That's really fun. You could get a degree on crypto Twitter alone. You know, I, I think about the, um, I have friends who became young or older moms, mm. and maybe they didn't get a traditional education, and now as they're seeing their young children grow into teenagers and go off to college, they've realized that there's a possibility of them doing something, perhaps during the past couple of years, their living rooms or their kitchens, and being able to pay attention to NFTs and Web3. I know we're getting pretty close to our next uh, panel here, and I want to be respectful of everyone's times. Before we leave, give everyone just a couple of seconds to think about this. If you were to say something inspiring to your younger self, knowing what you know now, what might that be? Hmm, who do I start with? Uh, my biggest thing is play. 
Like, that's the core of where I am. My, I say all the time, every day that childlike Amber high fives adult Amber, I win. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Hmm. Did that give you enough time to think? I know I threw a curveball on you guys on that one. I would say to trust your impulses, because it was the impulse to study engineering that got me into blockchain, and it was the impulse to also leave that that got me into like deeper into crypto. So like trust that. I would I would say to trust your impulses and trust your in intuition. Tell. Do what you love to do, and you'll be successful. You don't have to be the best in math or the best in English. Do what you love to do and you'll be successful and enjoy what you're doing. I think it's a big thing I wish someone told me. It took me a while to figure it out. So definitely, best one. I think I would say to my younger self, even if you know how it's done, always believe in the magic. Thank you so much here at Grit Daily for showing up. We love you guys. Connect with us, connect with each other, and we'll see you um, in a few minutes.